SCT Labs! In 1987, Oliver Flair, Oliver Favre, Favre, dude was a, yeah, uh, not related to the football player, I think, jumped into a lake from 53.9 meters and almost broke his back. It's kind of funny, the video, and then you think about that, oh, he actually almost broke his back. It's not so funny. Um, anyway, how fast was he moving just before he hit the water? And then I asked, assume his deceleration after hitting the water was 30 meters per second per second. 30 meters per second squared. Let's pretend that the depth of the lake is only 10 feet deep. I don't know why I gave it to you in feet over here and I gave everything else in meters. I should have probably given that, that to you in the same units. But did Oliver hit the ground? And at what velocity did he hit the ground? Let's calculate that out. I'm going to do it the hard way. Uh, okay. So we've got a dude. And he's jumping off of a diving board. That diving board is height H. Um, and he's going down at an acceleration of G and my question is how long does it take so T equals what and I know his velocity initial in the y direction is equal to zero alright cool so essentially I would just use delta H or delta Y is equal to V naught T plus one half AT squared now this delta H is actually negative H because he's going down um, this is zero is equal to negative one half g t squared those negatives cancel out and you got time is equal to 2h equals g t squared and put a g downstairs over there and i'll take the square root of both sides and technically i do need the plus or minus however i always disregard the plus or minus when i solve for time because there's no such thing as negative time all right that one's pretty straightforward all right, at what speed was he moving at when he hit the water? Well, I don't really know time unless I calculated it out. So what I could do is I could just say, well, if I'm now looking for V final, then the other equation that I have in my arsenal is uh, V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta X or 2A delta Y in this particular case because we're talking about the vertical direction. <sighs> The V final is what I'm looking for. The V initial is zero. So I have V final squared is equal to 2G uh, H. Technically, I should put a negative G and a negative H, but those two negatives will cancel. So they don't really matter. Uh, your V final is equal to the square root of 2GH. All right, that's a comforting thing. Now, some of you actually did this for part B. Some of you actually took this time that you solve and you plugged it into this equation instead. You said, all right, well, V final is equal to V initial plus AT. All right, all right, I see, I see that you can do that. Um, let's, let's do that. V final is equal to, uh, well, this is zero, G times T, which is the square root of 2H over G. So that's actually, if I want to put them both inside the square root, I go V final equals G squared, square root of 2H over G, oops, not G squared, but the square root of G squared, same as G. And then, since they're all over square roots, I can just make it over one big square root, and then this guy cancels with that guy, and I get V final is equal to the square root of G2H. Look, it's the same thing as that up, up over there. Personally, I actually like doing it this way better. Mainly because of this. What happens if I screwed up my numbers over here? Then my answer over here will get all messed up. I would rather use the variables that I'm given and base my answer on less of the calculations that I did before than rely on the fact that, you know, I mean, I don't want to propagate an error if I accidentally plug this into my calculator wrong. But as you can see, I mean, mathematically, they're the same thing. You're doing the same thing. So it doesn't really make a difference as to what you do if you do it this way or this way. I think this way is safer, though, personally. All right. Let's calculate out some things. Let's see. Uh, his velocity final that he's moving at is the square root of 2GH. 
Alright. So now, what I ask you, and I know I'm going to do this in a little bit more complicated way, is because I'm not plugging in numbers, but I, hopefully you'll see a good reason as to why I'm not plugging in numbers. Let me just extend the picture out a little bit more. He's moving at a velocity final of the square root of 2gh. Now, what I'm going to ask is, after he hits the water, he's now underwater, he's going to start decelerating at 30 meters per second squared. Um, so I'm just going to call this aw, and I'm going to have this thing point up. Because the acceleration is going up since he's moving down, he's slowing down, obviously. Um, I think that what I asked is, how far did he go before he hit the water? Okay, let's see. Um, well, what I'm going to do is, this no longer is V final for me, for this other problem is, this is going to be my V initial. Because the final velocity he hits the water at is the starting point of my second part of the problem. Because what I'm asking you is for a new velocity final, what is that? Okay, well that's pretty straightforward. Uh, v final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta Y. And this new delta Y, why don't we call this D, little d. I just don't want to confuse it with that H over there. And that A is actually the acceleration of the water. This thing is no longer zero, it's actually that. So I've got V final squared equals this uh, 2GH plus 2AWD. I can factor out a 2. I can square root both sides. So I have V final is equal to the square root of 2 times GH plus AWD. Actually, it's not plus, I'm sorry, I forgot, it's minus AWD. Because this AW is actually pointing in the positive direction, but that D is pointing in the negative direction. In this previous problem, the H and the G were pointing in the same direction, so they canceled each other out, the signs did. In this case, over here, the A is pointing in the di different direction than D, so there's that negative still does exist there. So that's my answer. And what I think is really interesting about this thing is it kind of tells you, like, I know that you guys are asking, well, why is he doing it in the complicated way? Well, wh why can't he just take the numbers and, and plug them in? And my answer is this. In math, uh, in my Algebra 2 one, uh, class. I'm teaching the kids about domain, and we, we, we talked about how there's a problem with domain when you have a square root, because the stuff inside has to be bigger than 1. 2GH minus AWD has to be bigger than or equal to 0. Sorry, not bigger than 1 equals, or it's bigger than or equal to 0. This cancels out, and I get GH has to be bigger than or equal to AWD. All right, what is that saying? Oh, I know what that says, okay. If, if GH is bigger than AWD, then the velocity final does exist. But if GH is smaller than AWD, you multiply gravity times your height and your acceleration times your distance. Um, if that's smaller, then the velocity doesn't exist. And I think what that's saying is, if I extend this thing out to maybe be at the very bottom of the screen, and I don't know, let's let AW equal to G. It's saying if H is smaller than D, then your velocity kind of falls apart. Well, that makes sense because it basically is saying that if AWD is uh, bigger than GH, then you won't hit the ground and you won't have a velocity down here. Your velocity down here won't exist because you won't even hit the ground. You just kind of slow down and then stop and then go back up. So that's kind of telling you, that's, that's very telling of that. I think that another interesting thing is, what do I need to do to make this equal to zero? Well, 
if I have GH minus AWD, if I let AW equal to G and I let D equal to H, then V final is actually going to equal to zero in this particular in that particular case. What that's saying is if you jumped off a cliff and, and it pulls you down at 9.8 meters per second squared, that's the acceleration you undergo. And then you fall into a water and it's the water slows you down at 9.8 meters per second squared for some reason. I don't know, maybe it's a less viscous water than you know most water. And the height at which the lake is, or the depth of the lake, is the same as the height of the cliff, then you're going to basically just kind of reach zero right here and go back up. That's all that's saying, which kind of makes sense. So this is your velocity final that you would hit the water, or you would hit the bottom of the lake at. So hopefully choose a lake that is um, deep enough. I guess if you want, you could calculate out um, if, if you want, you can calculate out what the depth of the lake is based off of your acceleration that you have underwater. Shoots, bro! Up out!